and breathe you love. I live. With everything I have, I'm here finally. I'm calling for the worshiper of me. I live in with you. I live to give you glory with everything I have. I'm here finally. I'm calling for the worshiper in me. Lord, you are my strong tower, my help and my strength. Yeah, with everything I have, I'm here. Calling for the worshiper in me. I thank you, God, for the worshiper in me. Javin, right here on Guts of the United Save. Song called Worshiper in Me. And we're grateful for each and every one of you tuning into the broadcast. You are tuned in to Guts of the United Save, a variety talk show with Christian point of view. Hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. Getting back to preparing for deliverance and we're in the book of Exodus. And uh, we're at uh, chapter 3. We're going to go uh, to verses 11 and 12 shortly. But uh, Moses has an objection. Moses objected to God's directive. He wondered aloud what authority he would have to speak with Pharaoh. He did not know how to persuade the Israelites to follow him. And this was the beginning of his attempts to negotiate his way out of the seemingly impossible task. Before we are too hard on Moses, we should ask ourselves, what would I have done if God had said this to me, especially considering my past, my past with Egypt, my history? What would we have said? Perhaps we should even consider whether we are negotiating with God about our life today. Think about it. Have you expressed some objection to God or a plan he has for you that you feel is not the plan you desire for your life? Rather than asking him about the plans he has for us, we want to tell him what we it's okay to tell God what you want, to let him know what you desire. But it's better to obey as well. And he tells you what it is he needs from you. Now, Moses doubts his ability, but God gives him assurance. And that's Exodus chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. And Moses said unto, him, unto God, Who am I? that I should go into Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, Sir, I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Moses' reply feigned humility. Didn't quite get there, but it, it kind of looked a little like it. It had some similarities to it. His rhetorical question implied that he was but a Hebrew servant or a commoner whose humble status would not allow him to approach someone as powerful as Pharaoh. Or it may indicate 
his lack of confidence in going before Pharaoh, fearing the king's refusal to let the Israelites go, or worse, that he would be killed for returning to Egypt as punishment for having killed an Egyptian taskmaster. So the question is, or the question now comes, how have you felt the presence of God when you have been sent out as his representative? Yes, God's presence does go with his people. Know that you, when you represent him, are going to have his presence with you. You are never alone. Moses received assurance from God that he would not be alone. Certainly, I will be with you. Whenever we face challenges in our lives, we need to remember God's faithfulness to us. His presence being with us and his power to deliver us. If he asks us to do something, he will bring it to pass. After all, we are dealing with I am that I am. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. I am hath sent me unto you, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And seeing that which is done to you in Egypt. I will bring you out of the affliction. God's response to Moses did not provide answers in exactly the fashion he might have desired. Surely God's faithful presence with him was a source of assurance, but he would need to take as a matter of faith what God revealed to him about his name. And he knew that not only the Israelites would need convincing, but probably Pharaoh as well. What do you do when you know the truth of God's word and plan. How much are we like Moses? How deep is our trust in the God who promises to be with us? Let's look at verses 13 through 17 in Exodus chapter 3. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am a sent me unto you. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord your God of the Lord. God of your father, God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt, unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the land of the Amorites and the Parasites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, unto the land flowing with milk and honey. God's reply to Moses was, I am that I am. The Hebrew phrase, Eye, Asher, Eye. And it's the form of the verb, Haya meaning to be. Eye is first person, common singular, and is literally translated, I will be. Moses' first task was to go and assemble Asaf, the elders, before speaking to the rest of the community. In many traditional cultures, including traditional African cultures, references given to elders, or zakain, Junior members of society often ask permission of senior members before speaking. God instructed Moses to tell the elders that the God of their fathers has appeared raw to him. The announcement of an appearance by God gave legitimacy to Moses' commission to the Israelites among the multitude or the multiple meetings for the Hebrew term for visit, God, is to take notice of or be concerned with. God sent Moses to tell the Israelites that he was aware of their suffering in Egypt and had come down to do something about it. 
God repeated the plan for the Israelites given to Moses. Now Moses was instructed to repeat the plan to the people. It was the plan that would become the fulfillment of God's promise to their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it was also about to unfold. It was about to be on. It was about to take place. It was about to go down. All that we've been waiting on all this time was about to jump off. You tune in to Guts, Gospel United States. A variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about you. I'm your host, Nikki B, and we thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast and being a part of what God is doing right here and right now. We hope that you'll continue to tune into the broadcast. We're here Monday, Thursday, and Saturday live. 6 a.m. Monday and Thursday. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The number to call to join in the conversation, to speak, to listen, to hear, to ask for prayer, to cry about it, laugh about it, pray about it, is 877-217-5375. That's 877-217-5375. I do want to remind you, this weekend is a powerful weekend. And this weekend we're going to be doing some great things. We're going to have a great time at the Fort Lauderdale Multicultural Church of God in Christ. We're actually starting our weekend early with Trunk or Treat on October 31st at 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. For all you have young people who you're concerned about uh, where they go and how they, what they do for this day, then the place to go is Fort Lauderdale Multicultural Church of God in Christ will be in the field uh, on our parking lot with our Trunk or Treat event. Then Missions Weekend. Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and then Saturday evening, we'll be celebrating and bringing awareness and, uh, to um, hunger awareness, and we'll be uh, dealing with those kind of things and dealing with the situations at our hand, uh, trying to find ways to raise funds to uh, compensate for some of the things that are missing in our current economy. There is no space now. If the government says, I'm not going to take care of your downtrodden. If they're cutting back on things that would help our poor. And so it's time for the church to arise and take its proper place as the place where people can come, where they, they can run in strong tower. For the righteous community, and say for those, a place of refuge, a place where people can get to know who God is because we care and we love we extend to the point of need. So we're asking for your help. If you can come out and help us. Uh, this is a fundraising event. And we'll have a baby contest and awards luncheon and then a nice little musical event. And we're hoping that as many of you who can and will will show up and help us be a blessing and be a blessing to us uh, so that we can bless those who are in need. And we thank you because those who give to the poor lend to God. And God does know any of so we thank you for tuning in to Guts Gospel United States, a variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. We'll be right back after this. This is Lyme, American Story. When you teach someone to read, they have a, a sense of self-fulfillment. Seeing families, friends, fall victims to gang violence, drugs, it definitely made me want to serve. There was a hole in the ground, and by the time we left, there was a house. I realized that these kids were not getting the meal. It is so easy to get back. I don't have a lot of money to help people, but I do have something. I have time. We can give any story you have. I see a great need in my community. Just imagine how strong a society we could be. This is what I hope about. Every one of us has a role to play in making our communities and our country stronger. Discover yours. Help us continue to make a difference in the life of our nation. Go to serve.gov and find the opportunity that works for you. This message is brought to you by the Corporation for National Community Service. A new job hunting. With self-check, you can check your employment eligibility records before your next employer does. So before you apply, check out uncis.gov backslash self-check. It's fast, it's easy, and it's free. 
Self check into the confidence of knowing your government records are in order. Check out your employment eligibility today at usis.gov backslash self check. Self check is a series of U.S. citizenship and immigration services in either. Are you an artist, musician, or group who produce professional quality gospel music beyond the demo stage? Log on to Rhythm and Gospel, subscribe to our artist subscription, and then submit your music by uploading it. You can be contacted. Not all submissions qualify. Send your best. If you need help bringing your project up to quality, we can help with that also. So visit the r and website for more information. Oh, yeah, joy. Count it all joy. God is my joy. And I tell you, just uh, in time for today, I guess, for this uh, particular time of the year. And a uh, little news you can use on my body, maybe you will as well. 1949 case that inspired The Exorcist, the movie, uh, continues to fascinate St. Louis. St. Louis University junior Zach Grummer Strong 
has never seen The Exorcist, the 1973 horror film considered one of the finest examples of unadulterated cinematic terror. He's only vaguely familiar with the month-long 1949 demon purging ritual at his school that inspired William Peter Blatty's novel and later the movie. But just in time for Halloween, Jesuit scholars have joined a whole new generation of horror buffs in St. Louis to recount the supernatural incident. The university hosted a panel discussion Tuesday on the exorcism, which involved the treatment of an unidentified suburban Washington, D.C. boy. About 500 people crammed into a pious the 12th library, with some spilling into the library aisles, leaning against pillars or sitting on decks. I'd like to believe it's the real thing, said Gromer Strong, a theology and sociology student from Atlanta. But you just can't know. That's part of why we're here, in pursuit of truth. And it's such a great story. The university scholars and guest speaker Thomas Allen, author of a 1993 account of the events at the school's former Alexian Brothers Hospital, emphasized that definitive proof that the boy known as known only as Robbie was possessed by malevolent spirits is unattainable. Maybe he instead suffered from mental illness or sexual abuse or fabricated the entire experience. Like most of religion's basic tenets, it ultimately comes down to faith. If the devil can convince us that he does not exist, then half the battle is won, said Reverend Paul Stark, vice president for mission and ministry at the 195-year-old Catholic school. He opened the discussion with a prayer from the church's exorcism handbook, imploring God to fill your servants with the courage to fight that reprobate dragon. Some of the non-students in the audience spoke of personal connections to an episode that has enthralled generations of St. Louis's residents. One man described living near the suburban St. Louis home where the 13-year-old boy arrived in the winter of 1949. His Lutheran mother was a St. Louis native who married a Catholic. Another said she was a distant cousin of Father William Bowden, who led the exorcism ritual after consulting with the Archbishop of St. Louis, but remained publicly silent about his experiences, though he did tell Alan it was the real thing. Bowden died in 1983. Bowden was assisted by the Reverend Walter Holleran, who unlike his colleagues, spoke openly with Allen and expressed his skepticism about potential paranormal events before his death a decade ago. He talked more about the boy and how much he suffered and less about the right, Allen said. Here was a scared, confused boy caught up in something he didn't understand. He told me, I simply don't know, and that is where I leave it, the other added. I just don't know. Allen zealously protects the anonymity of Robbie, despite others' efforts to track him down to this day. Gary Mackey, a 59-year-old accountant who left work early to attend the campus event, said he also is unsure whether the exorcist was a work of fiction or instead a riveting real-life account of barely comprehensible forces. He does know this. He cannot forget the movie that he saw with a buddy four decades ago. They drove 100 miles from their home in Louisville, Kentucky, to the nearest theater showing it across the state line in Cincinnati. I saw the movie when I was 19 years old, and it scared me to death, Matthew said. I think it's the scariest movie ever made. Blatty, who would not be reached for comment on Wednesday, said in 2011 interview with the Huffington Post that was timed to the book's 40th anniversary, that the 1949 case was the novel's inspiration. The book and film were set at Georgetown University rather than in the Midwest, and the possession, possessed child became a girl instead of a boy. So just a little look into the fact that uh, there are some things that are going on in this world, and there is a definite interest in our society, in our country, and in this culture for the paranormal, for the supernatural, and usually for the supernatural and, and its evil ramifications. So we need to pray and we need to uh, bring to light uh, some of the things that can be helpful to people who are dealing with the supernatural, who would love to deal with the supernatural, that they might be able to meet the supernatural God, the most high, the most holy, uh, the, the one who is, I am that I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
So, uh, getting back to that, what in his name? God revealed that his personal name is I am who I am, or I will be what who I will be. God seems to imply that his name is not important. What was important was that God could be sufficient for them. The essence of the divine being, I will be what I will be, was to be there for them as he had been in the past and would be in the future. So something that we want to apply to our lives is that we will know that obedience and trust promote a can-do attitude while fear produces an unwillingness to trust God. And fear is one of the big things in our society today. And it is one of the reasons why faith is not as prevalent in our society today. Fear and disobedience contradict one's faith. Disobedience implies that one does not totally believe and trust in the promises of God. Moses' life is an example of God's preparation process. Before one achieves success, one must experience failure. Failure is the vehicle to keep going and not to give up. Failure strengthens faith in God. Failure leads to unconditional trust in God's promises. Obedience and trust promote a can-do attitude. Fear produces an unwillingness to trust God. And we should respond to this series. And how should we respond to this series? We should seek opportunity to participate with a ministry in our church that provides us with the greatest challenge. Seek an opportunity to participate in ministries in your church that you probably normally uh, would not support or might not support or might not be able to support. Support it financially, support it however you can. If your church does not have such ministries, look within your community. Some ideas to consider are Big Brother Big Sisters or Volunteer Super Kitchens or Homeless Shelters or Nursing Homes or with at risk youth. Whatever you do, find a way to sow, to be active, to work in the building of God's kingdom. As we close out, dear Father, we praise you because you created the challenges we face in life. We praise you because if you created the challenges, you can help us overcome the challenges. We ask for more faith and courage when we are placed in challenging situations. Help us not to shrink back in fear, but to walk in courage and obedience, knowing that you go before us. In Jesus' name we pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. We thank you all for tuning into the broadcast. You are tuned in the guts because we have to say a variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus.
would suffer for the kids and then a very special time of activity. A three-hour period from 6 until 9 p.m. for all you. So we encourage you to come be a part of this wonderful outreach at Old Gospel Church tonight. It's a Christian alternative to Halloween, and I know it will be a blessing for you to get your kids here and participate in Christian activities on this night.